How does this incident affect your community, affect business, people's social life, or their sense of security even? You know, I think right now um, people are just feeling uh, in disbelief um, and shock, sadness and anger that this happened in Monterey Park. You know, oftentimes when you read about these incidents, these um, events, you know, unfortunately we, of we often think, well, it happens elsewhere. It would never happen in our own community. Uh, but unfortunately, um, this has happened in Monterey Park. And understandably, their sense of security has, has been shattered. We need to also then uh, support uh, these very important locations uh, that, um, yes, they're private uh, business halls, but they're also places to socialize, to gather. And I think we need to, uh, you know, uh, in addition to uh, supporting the victims, their families, as, our, as well as our own community in uh, dealing with the trauma, we need to also ask ourselves what resources uh, can we do to support these uh, dance studios so that people feel safe um, to uh, be able to continue going to them. What do you think can be done? What actions can you take? Well, you know, first and foremost, I think we want to, um, you know, meet with the family and the owners and just ask, you know, like, um, um, you know, how are you feeling first and foremost? Um, and also, you know, how can we help you? How's the public safety situation in Monterey Park in general before the mass shooting? Monterey Park is a very safe community. I mean, we were named in 2017 uh, one of the uh, top cities to live in America by Money Magazine. And, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, we've never had such an incident, but this is generally a very safe community, um, which is why many people uh, want to move here, want to live here because of our schools, because of our uh, restaurants. You know, we have some of the best uh, Chinese food. And also because we have a very involved and engaged police department and also uh, people uh, respect our police officers. You know, I also want to say that, you know, um, once the incident had occurred, uh, within three minutes, within three minutes, our police responded very quickly. And so I want to commend our uh, men and women of the police department, as well as uh, the firemen and paramedics uh, who also rushed to the aid of those uh, victims uh, who were wounded. So, yeah, it's really tragic. It's very tragic. I mean, it's very tragic time again. Um, the timing of it and when it occurred, I mean, it's a, a very tragic. Yeah, of course. It must be some sleepless nights. Yeah, it's been very sleepless nights here, yes. It's my office. So. After the mass shooting incident, debates are heated again about gun ownership. Activists are again call for stricter gun control, but different studies show that gun ownership by Asian Americans are actually on the rise, especially during the pandemic after an increase in crimes against Asian Americans. What's your observation? Well, you're right, California does have uh, one of the strictest, strictest um, gun uh, regulations in the country, but uh, this is a national conversation we need to be having. Uh, unfortunately, um, there was another shooting incident, mass shooting incident up in the city of Half Moon Bay. And again, my heart and sympathies go out to uh, the community of Half Moon Bay because they are probably experiencing what we did just a day earlier. There are many uh, questions um, that uh, we need to be asking is that, you know, at the federal level, you know, you know, what is Congress doing to address this issue? Because it's not even the end of January yet, and there are now 38 um, incidents of mass shooting. And, you know, so clearly the violence has to stop. How much do you know about the suspect and his motives? Right now, we're still trying to determine his um, motive, and we may never uh, understand uh, uh, the reason why he committed such a heinous and violent crime. I mean, of course, you know, what I do understand is that uh, he uh, had a history of himself f uh, visiting that dance studio. I, I, it's my understanding that he um, uh, may have met his ex-wife there. Um, but again, we really don't know the reasons um, that, uh, you know, what demons uh, were in his head that prompted him to do something so heinous during L a Lunar New Year, you know, one of the most important holidays for, for um, those who observe the lunar calendar in Asia. All this has triggered uh, discussions about mental health care for Asian American community. Has this issue caught your attention before? And, and that is a good point because mental health access um, is a very important issue and it's one that uh, we know there are disparities um, in access in terms of um, uh, communities of color, uh, immigrant communities, and part of that uh, reason why there is a disparity is because, you know, are there resources to make sure that there's in language, um, that is culturally sensitive um, material programs that is observant of those uh, cultural and linguistic um, um, diversity issues that would allow and make it easier, more easier to um, access uh, mental health issues. It's part of a larger um, um, 
conversation and I think crisis when we have um, yeah, um, tragedy upon tragedy upon tragedy, um, not just here in California, but across the country. We will need everyone's support um, as we begin the long road of recovery from this awful trauma. I think that if we're united and if we are given the support that we need, then this community will is resilient and will recover. And uh, you know, again, I hope um, everyone who is listening uh, is, you know, thank you for supporting us. And also, we hope that all of you uh, still are able to have a uh, Lunar New Year um, that is uh, peaceful uh, for you and your families.